All right, we've got a great interview for you guys today. Senator Joe Manchin from West Virginia, also former governor of West Virginia, joins us on the Young Turks. Senator, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, James. Uh, appreciate it. Um, so, Senator, let, let me start by asking about your record. So, obviously, uh, you're known as the most conservative Democrat in the Senate. Uh, National Journal's got you at 55% conservative voting record, 46% liberal. Uh, you voted with Trump 58% of the time so far. In the first 100 days, it was up to 67% of the time. And I can go on and on about the issues. So, why be a Democrat at all? Well, I guess you have to know where I came from and who I am. I, I'm a West Virginia Democrat. My grandfather, through the Depression, you know, Roosevelt Democrat. Uh, my grandfather got thrown out of uh, company housing. He was a coal miner, and uh, he tried to uh, organize uh, the miners at that time. And 1927 was thrown out. Uh, kind of moved into a barn there for about a year. So. Uh, we've been through some tough times, and we've always believed that you had to work and contribute something back. Uh, I'm, cons uh, I'm fiscally responsible and socially compassionate. My grandmother was a one-woman social uh, worker. Everybody went to Mama K. If you had no place to stay, uh, Mama K took care of you. If you needed uh, food, she fed you. Clothing, she clothed you. My grandfather had a little grocery store because that's how he started his livelihood, taking care of his family, my dad. and the five brothers and sisters that he had uh, because he couldn't work in the mines anymore. So uh, we're a product of a West Virginia environment through some challenging times. Now I never forgot where I came from, but I believe that people should contribute something back, should give something back, should work for something. But you know, I watch, I'm a product of my environment. So from Farmington, West Virginia, Jenks, I watched when the mines were on strike or if somebody uh, lost a husband in a mine, that my grandfather would take food, we would deliver the food to him, he would take care of him forever. Uh, right. But if people could work, he expected to get off their butt and do something. So he was willing to give anybody a hand up and he was willing to take care of those who couldn't take care of themselves, but he wanted people to contribute that could. So yeah. I don't know how that ranks or where I fit in, but uh, I believe very strongly uh, that I've had a lot of opportunities and my family always taught me that I had a responsibility to give back and contribute. Yeah, so, so I try to do the best I can. Right. I I read the history of your family and 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 as I read the story of your mom coming into this country as an immigrant, I think that's why a lot of progressives hope that you would fight harder on the issue of immigration when it comes to fighting Trump's have, policies. Jenks, I fought on that one. Uh, you know, the bill that we had, the Senate bipartisan bill, is basically I think still the model what we should be working on. And that bill basically gave everybody a chance to register, to sign up uh, and get in a the queue, if you would, as far as naturalization. Uh, it was no amnesty bill. You had to work and per per perform, uh, get a job, uh, learn English, participate and perform. I think it was a tremendous opportunity. Uh, we couldn't get the house to move on that piece of legislation. S Senator uh, Manchin. I'm not for building a wall. I'm not for building a wall at all. Okay, I know you missed the Dream Act vote. Some think that that was uh, there was political motivation behind that, but you can set the record straight right here. Uh, which way would you have voted for the Dream Act? The Dream Act. I believe that any child, any any person that gets an education, uh, should be kept in this country, given every opportunity, because they're going to be they're going to be contributors. I really do, and I didn't have any problem with that. Uh, but I said this. If you, as I recall, Jenks, it was for if you had two years of participation militarily. Well, I said you should be honorably discharged, show that you you did you know you did your duty and you were honorably discharged. Uh, then it said if you had two years of college, now I said there should be a degree, some sort of a degree. I know people that go to school all the time and never get a degree, American children. But if you have a child that basically is willing to serve in the military. You have a child that basically gets a four year or associate degree of some sort, they're gonna contribute. They probably contribute more than maybe some natural born citizens of our country already. So I was always in support of that. But let me understand that a little bit better. So as it was constituted though, would you have voted in favor of it or against it? I forget exactly the constitution of how that was built, put together, the way it was saying, the way the bill came across. It said two years of participation, I recall. It didn't say anything about honorable. It didn't say 
being discharged, okay? So you would have uh, voted against it. Well, you served your country. It didn't say about getting a degree. So I would have not supported unless we could have had the amendments that showed that support. Okay, that's clear. So yeah, now, now, that's where I was. Yeah, now going back to the issue of, uh, again, you call yourself a Democrat, and I wanted to just suss out exactly what that means to you. Virginia Democrat. Yeah, so um, would you call yourself a progressive? On issues, I think that progressive means that are you supportive of things that help people's lives? If I can support and help somebody help themselves, I'm gonna do it every time. Uh, the difference between, I would think as a Democrat, who I am a, a Democrat, as a Republican, a Republican goes to the bottom line, I think every time. When it comes down to weighing human, the human and uh, uh, the human being, uh, they're gonna go to the bottom line. A true Democrat is going to go to the bottom of your heart. Can we help that person be a better person, live a better quality of life? Uh, I feel very strongly in that. So you would call yourself a progressive? Well, it depends on what, I don't know what your definition of progressive is. Okay, all right, fair enough. Uh, so uh, you said in an interview that you are against the Washington Democrat philosophy. You don't think that it works. Well, it's not everything to everybody, Jenks. What's yeah. happened in West Virginia? Someone asked me, Elizabeth and I had this conversation. She said, Joe, what happened? West Virginia is still a majority of people registered as Democrats in West Virginia, but they're all voting against the Democratic Party. I said, the people in West Virginia, the hardworking people in West Virginia believe the party that they had always associated with was the working person, helping the working person, helping a person that was down and out, trying to get back up and on their feet. Uh, now that party and the philosophy of Washington is, it's become so politically correct that it's a party that prevents working people from working. The overreach, over regulation, uh, over intervening and interfering. Uh, it's just, I can just tell you about West Virginia. Yeah, so- Democrats I know. Uh, so I understand, so let's go to some of those issues that you just mentioned there, over regulating. For example, you voted to repeal the stream protection rule. Um, and your top donor is First Energy uh, that wound up getting in some degree of trouble for uh, putting arsenic in a pond. It seems like they would benefit from the repeal of that regulation. So did that have anything to do with your vote? No, Jenks, I know it's hard to believe and I know it's hard for people to, I don't have any idea who gives me money. I don't solicit from the standpoint, you do this for me, quid pro quo, that's never been me. That's not my political mantra at all. With that being said, the stream protection rule, I couldn't get any, I couldn't even get a definition on what they consider a stream. Should a stream have water in it? Should it have aquatic life? Should it be disposing into our water, uh, our streams if you can, or our rivers or water or sources? Uh, the overreach that they had on some of this stuff made no sense at all. And I couldn't go home and explain it. I've always said this, Jenks, if I can't go home in West Virginia and explain it, I sure sure as heck can't vote for it. And some of this does not make sense. I have said this, I think there's a balance between the environment and economy, we have a responsibility. If, if there's a certain criteria that we're trying to meet, then we should have the technology that we have developed showing that that can be done. If you can't show that it can be done, then how can you hold me at a criteria when we haven't invested ourselves as a government uh, and have no intentions of doing so? It's just because you like something or don't like something doesn't make sense. So Senator Manchin, I got a note from one of your constituents, Lisa Lucas, and she talked about how her family catches bass in the streams in West Virginia. The problem is literally every single stream in West Virginia has a fish consumption advisory. And so she's asking, look, did they use this to feed their family? If I can't fish in any of the streams because the fish might be poisoned, don't you think you should make more of an effort to make sure that the streams in West Virginia are clean? I will, and I agree with her. It should be more of an effort. And well, I think some of the streams that, we though. have is cleaned up quite a bit, Jenks. Uh, I fish in the streams as much as I possibly can. I keep my fishing pole in my car because when I go over the mountains and I fish all through the mountains of West Virginia, I'm fishing for trout, bass, everything I possibly can. And I know those fish, I've eaten the fish. So I know those fish can, and there's some streams that because of algae blooms and different things, but for if there's discharge and that discharge does not meet the uh, Clean Water Act, uh, then they shouldn't be doing it. There should be no discharge, or it should be cleaned up, or it should be uh, fined to the point to where 
they're able to stop and clean it up. If not, they should be cease and desist. So Senator Manchin, I wanna show you a graphic here, graphic one and then if we can two as well. But let's start with one. This is the list of your top donors. I, I, I thought you said that you don't, I, I understand that you said you don't do quid pro quo, that, that was clear. Yeah. But you know who your top donors are, right? I do not. You don't know who your top donors are? I do not, you're showing me something I've never seen. Okay, so this is from Open you Secrets. Have, I know you have, Jenks, I know that it's hard for anyone. To, to believe, I do not, I abs never have. And I've been around this process for a long time, never have. I had a person one time come to my office when I was Governor Jenks. And they come in, they said, uh, uh, they were asking for something, it didn't make any sense to me at all. And they said, well, you know, we had a big fundraiser for you. And this, I said, oh, you did? Well, I would have thought you were investing in good government. I guess we were both wrong. So tell me how much, I'll make sure you get it back. So, all right, I believe that the audience out there, I gotta be honest with you, Senator, is going to be in a little bit of disbelief that- Well, there's still, there's still those of us who are involved in public service for the sake of serving the public. Okay, so when the donations come in, your staff doesn't tell you about it? I never ask. Okay. I never ask and they never tell me. They'll tell me the amounts if we have a fundraiser. I know the amounts, I know how much we're raising. I know what it takes to run a campaign. But individually, I, they don't come and say, oh, this, 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 and this. Right, because so your limits in West Virginia, the limits were always $1,000. That was the maximum anybody can give you. So no this, corporations or businesses. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the list stands out for a number of reasons. Uh, one is that there is, it is filled to the rim with energy companies. Uh, and I know you worked at an energy company in 09 and, and 2010 as well, uh, and you were an executive there. And you have voted with the energy companies very consistently, hence a natural well, question. As to I believe whether it all in energy policy. I know what it takes to run the country. You need base load. The only base load you have that you can count on 24 seven, Jenks, is coal and nuclear. It's uninterruptible power. Natural gas, especially in West Virginia, we've got so much with the Marcellus and Utica Shell now, that produces a tremendous amount of new energy, but it is interruptible, but it's even overtaken how much energy it's producing versus what coal and nuclear is. But when you take coal, nuclear, and uh, gas today, uh, you're well over 70, 80% of the energy this country consumes. So I'm a realist, I understand the energy market. And I think there's a balance there to be had and it creates a lot of good jobs in West Virginia. It's a way of life in West Virginia. But it's what we've always done, which is the heavy lifting for the country. But does it, so Senator Manchin, I looked up the median income in West Virginia. Now you, you've served West Virginia for a long time as governor and then senator. Uh, and, and the median income is for West Virginia is 48th in the country. So the third from the bottom. So if helping the energy companies and the coal companies winds up helping the citizens, how come it hasn't in West Virginia? Well, we have the ups and downs, but the biggest problem that we've had in West Virginia is absentee ownership. We have a lot of these companies that take the profits out of our state and have always done, especially in our southern counties. You know, 10 to, 10 to 12 of our southern counties, uh, large, the large landowners, my goodness, some of the gilded homes up in Rhode Island were built, Berwyn Land and Pocahontas Land and some of those who still uh, are receiving the benefits from the hard work of West Virginians. And these people aren't putting money back into the state. That has been a tremendous challenge that we've had from day one. And out of 55 counties, I've got 10 to 15 counties that really are challenged and struggle. And they're up and down with the energy market. We haven't diversified, we need broadband high speed. We've tried to expand out when I was governor, we put broadband and high speed in every school in West Virginia. No matter how far up a holler or a creek it was, we got it to them. We just haven't had the markets that dispersed out into the public because it's so diverse and uh, we're trying everything possible. If you wanna know what infrastructure we need, and I would tell President Trump, if you're going to, we need to have connectivity in West Virginia. So everybody has a chance. So I'm gonna show you one more graphic here. It's actually graphic three, uh, and it shows again, open secrets, uh, the contributions that are coming in. Now I know you say you don't check this, but there is one like larger picture macro uh, question I wanted to ask you about this. Your small individual contributions make up only 1% of the money coming in from 2013 to 2018 into your campaigns. So 99% big money, 1% small money. So I wonder if you're for getting big money out of politics. It's a literal question, or do you think the current system is fine? Oh, the current system is not fine. The current system has destroyed the politics 
or the government as we know how we go through this process of electing people. The dark money coming in is horrible. That's not the money the candidates run, forget about that, Jenks. That money's not going to make a difference in who wins and who loses. It's the dark money coming in that we have no control whatsoever. Uh, you know, Citizens United is absolutely destroying our country. And it should be outlawed, it should be done away with. It should have never come into being. So do you, do you think there should be pu public financing instead of private financing of elections? I tried public finance when I was governor of West Virginia and supported it, absolutely. No. Would you be in favor of an amendment to get money out of politics? Absolutely. Okay. It's, it's, you talk about money being the root of all evils. In politics, it's destroying politics as we know it. Yeah. And I think that the length of time, on top of taking money out, wouldn't it be great if you put a time limit on what what periods of time we could campaign? I mean, we're we're talking a year and a half out now, Jenks, 2018. I can tell you, I'm sick and tired of it already, and just getting started. We got a year and a half of this to go. So uh, one way to go is uh, how your primary opponent, Paula Jean Swearingen, is going, which is to say, I'm going to forsake the big money overall. I'm just only going to take small money contributions. Have you considered that for yourself, Senator Manchin? I, I haven't been in control of the money from we go out and campaign and we go out for solicitation like every other competitive campaign. And uh, we're going online. I've not been online, so I need to get online to get more of the individual contributions. Uh, I'm very appreciative from a dollar on up. And in the state, it's a thousand, but in the in on a uh, US Senate or the congressional, it's $2,700 per person is the top amount uh, per cycle. And there's not many people in West Virginia that can do anywhere near that. Uh, Senator. You know, people basically, they give what they desire to give. Uh, and uh, I'm happy uh, yeah. with the small donations. I, and I'm gonna be soliciting more through the online that we haven't done before, but we will start. Yeah, of course, the real money is in the PACs and the independent expenditures, and uh, as you point out, and that's where the, uh, the really wealthy and the corporations pour hey, James, a lot of money. Here's, here's the thing you need to know about this. Uh, the PACs and the independent expenditures, we have no knowledge of that, and no way can you and should you. That's that's one thing they've kept pretty, pretty stringent, that you can't be involved in the type of uh, activity that an independent expenditure has on your behalf. But they're all lined up. They're all lining up in different categories. Uh, right now, uh, the Republicans want 60 Republicans. And they look at West Virginia as being a layup. Uh, Donald Trump wins by 42, 43 points. That's definitely Republican territory. That's our number one hit list. Uh, that should be a Republican. And they're going around the country uh, having all these independent expenditures saying, Here's one where you can donate to, and we're gonna pick that one up with no problem at all, uh, West Virginia. And uh, that's what we're dealing with. Yeah, so on that front, you've asked uh, people to sign a pledge, your colleagues to sign a pledge not to work against the current incumbents in the Senate. Um, but wouldn't that freeze in the, the advantage that the Republicans have now? They have a 52 to 48 lead. So if you just keep the current composure of the Senate, that locks in Republican majorities forever if you actually uh, delivered on that pledge. I hope not, Jenks, that's not the intent. I said, I, let me explain it to you this way. I go to, to work every day in Washington in a hostile environment. That hostile environment is if you wanna get something done and you're upset and you're frustrated with the process and the toxic environment that we have in Washington, think about going to work every day and your fellow workers trying to get you fired, Jenks. They're doing everything they can to undermine you and undercut you. So when you come to work as a Democrat, just be having a D by your name, every R, no matter how close you think they are, how good a friend that you think they may be, they have been programmed to go out and raise money and campaign against you and defeat you because we need more R's. And the D's do the same thing. So when Harry Reid first told me, I said, Harry, I can tell you what's wrong with the place. I said, if you did this kind of shenanigans in West Virginia, someone would meet you after work in the parking lot, in the parking lot and, and, and get you straight. That's how we do things back home. It's not the right way, but that's the West Virginia way. And I said, this is not right. You can't expect me to raise money against Republicans that I'm working with. And I said, that's only about uh, setting colleagues. If you're already a setting colleague, you're already in here, then we shouldn't be allowed to raise money and campaign against each other if you expect us to get something accomplished in Washington. 
That's all I said. So Senator Manchin, I think that people are concerned that that locks in the current system and the establishment as it is. And people feel that it's not representing them well. And so that's why they're looking for primaries and other people, especially to get rid of Republicans. Sure. But look, you know, you've got a mixed record there, to be honest, Senator Manchin, in West Virginia, too. I mean, in 96, when you were running a primary against Charlotte Pritt and she won, you wrote a letter to 900 Democrats saying to not support her and support Cecil Underwood, the Republican, instead. So. Why did you do that and why did you lobby against a fellow Democratic colleague in West Virginia? It wasn't that, I'm a West Virginian first and I just wanted to have the best person I thought had the capacity and the capability of running the state. Charlotte's a good person, was a great legislator. She brought a wealth of ideas to it. I didn't think that she had the experience to actually run a state. And it takes a lot more than just being a legislator if you're gonna be an executive. Being an executive and a legislator are two different things. So let's go to some of the issues. Uh, Medicare for all, uh, now backed by your colleague that you mentioned earlier, Elizabeth Warren. Uh, Tammy Baldwin looks like she's gonna support us. Obviously, Bernie Sanders on board, uh, mm -hmm. and the list is growing, uh, Kirsten Gillibrand. So uh, what's your position on Medicare for all? Uh, Medicare for all, or the one payer system I think we're talking about, I think it should be debated. I think that we should have, there should be a working group looking at all aspects of that. If we're trying to make the public believe that we can have a uh, market driven system in healthcare that we do today, right, wrong, or indifferent, uh, it's market driven. Uh, that you're going to get the same services through a one payer system, or you're going to pay the same taxes that you're paying now. Whatever you're paying is going to be the same. I think that's not correct and not accurate, and not uh, on a, a, an honest attempt at uh, telling the people what it's going to take in order for us to go that direction. But I think it's something we should be looking at. You know, when you become 65, uh, they don't ask you um, about your pre-existing condition. They don't ask you what concerns and problems you may have. They're going to take care of you. So I understand where that uh, that comes from. I want to make sure we look at every aspect of it. So I am very open and very willing to sit down and look at a system that can give better health care, better quality of service. Uh, you know, Jenks, we just expanded health care for 20 million people. In West Virginia, 175,000 people who never had health care are getting it for the first time. Uh, up until this time, the only health care services they received was going to the emergency room. That's not uh, the healthiest way to keep yourself in a preventive care to get from illness. You're using it when you need it the most. But we've never instructed or tried to educate people how to use their newfound wealth. The newfound wealth they have now is health care. So before you, the Republicans just want to throw everybody out, can't we sit down and help work with people? How can you give $600 billion of tax rebates to the wealthiest people in America and then take it away from $800 billion of service to the poorest people? That's a non-starter. So. Yeah, so the Republican proposals are draconian, and I think almost everybody, uh, certainly on the Democratic side, agrees, yeah. including yourself, that that's not the right way to go. Uh, last question on Medicare for all: You've got 60% of the country that now says they're in favor of it. That is a big, big percentage. Obviously, Medicare, as it is applied, uh, has a popularity rating of 77%. Even 53% say yes, government-run, single-payer health care. So, with those huge numbers uh, behind you. Uh, you said you're open to it, but a, a lot of senators have now come out and declared, yes, we are for Medicare for all. Well, are, I are want you people there to yet? know that they're gonna pay difference in taxes too. The tax system, if you look at the countries that have one payer system, everybody pays something. Everybody's paying into it. Uh, and also, you, you're gonna be, con your access to healthcare is gonna be a little bit more controlled. That's how they control the prices. I'm supporting the US negotiating help. Don't you think, Jenks, that the US government should negotiate for lower prices, whether it's pharmaceuticals or anything, they should be in there. How do we allow Medicare not to negotiate? Doesn't make any sense to me at all. Right, But so, so, so you're saying that there have, are gonna be higher taxes for Medicare for all, which is true, but then you would have no premiums, no deductibles, no co-pays, et cetera. So, it, so are you in favor I'm of it or no? From, we have a little, we have this young boy, okay, this young child. I just was thinking of England right now and London. UK, this one child, right? They're deciding now whether that child gets services or not. I don't think that would be a decision we'd make in America. 
So you're not for Medicare for all. I'm just trying to understand. I'm for I'm looking at it. I want to do whatever is best, but I don't want to go in with blinders on to say, oh yeah, don't no problem at all. I'm I'm to the point, sit down, let's look at the pluses and the minuses, make sure the public sees it transparent and makes decisions. Okay. Uh, right now, mm -hmm. you know, we haven't facts aren't on the table. I can't tell you, will mm -hmm. it be an open market? Will it still be market driven? Do I still have access to the best care in the world? Right. I'm hearing that a lot of the Canadians come to America because they can't get it when they want it and what they want. Yeah. I want to learn all this. Well, James, I, this I, is all new to me. Yeah, I understand. And and Medicare, by the way, does have a private option, so it, it doesn't foreclose that. But let's move on to another issue: minimum wage. Um, so 74% of Americans are in favor of increasing minimum wage, including a majority of Republicans. 58% are Republicans. Uh, so are you for increasing the minimum wage, and if so, to how much? I am in favor of that West Virginia did it in a state that's challenged as we are. They went from 725, now they're up to 875, and I think they're even going further. So this is all good news. Uh, every state's gonna be different, one size doesn't fit all. I know everybody's going across the board at $15 or $10. It was 1010 before, and I understand how we got to 1010, was that they went back to 68 and they indexed it from 68 to, to, to today's uh, wages, and it came up in a $10 range. So I think that once we find that, and then it should be indexed after that, so you don't have to make this a political fight every time you're trying to do something. So right now, is there a number that you would state that you're in favor of, whether it's 10 or 12 or $15? In West Virginia or across, the, I mean, are you talking about across the country? Well, as a senator, you'd be voting, of course, federally, but I'm happy to take both yeah, I think answers. There should be, I, I think there should be a $10 minimum, a minimum across the board for the United States and let every country do what they want above that. Okay, that's a clear answer. Uh, you voted, uh, uh, you were among the five Democrats who voted for arming Saudi Arabia. Now, I know that we've been doing that for a long time, uh, but uh, Saudi Arabia has that same fundamentalist uh, Muslim ideology as some of the biggest terror groups out there. That's, so that's a reality. And, and not only were 15 out of the 19 hijackers Saudis, and you could say that's a long time ago, but sure. they helped fund the Sunni insurgency against our boys in Iraq. So. Why, why did you vote to fund uh, the Saudi arms deal? Well, I asked a lot of questions on that. When I was on armed services for six years, I was concerned about absolutely because the so-called smart bombs weren't being used very smartly and there was still collateral damage. We were all concerned about that. But I was told by every expert that we have that advises us that these weapons are going to be sold by the French or UK or people who might not put as much of an emphasis on the education, the training that needs to be done with these types of weapons to reduce the collateral damage. So I looked at it from the standpoint, do we have more input? Can we use more input as far as on education and training to make sure these weapons that we're pro providing are used in the, uh, on, in the best manner that we can uh, to defeat the terrorists and defeat the people that we're trying to defeat the enemy without the innocent being harmed. And I was told at the end that would be the thing to do. You're talking about in Yemen and, and uh, yes, uh, and a horrible, I, horrible situation. Yeah, the terrible human rights abuses um, uh, there. I, I, you know, I I would have gone in a different direction, but of course everybody's different. That's why I'm asking you the questions on, on I'm, how I'm you would go. You, and why. I have access yeah. to these to these professionals. And you're talking about the best of the best, and they're giving you their information that they have, and you have I to understand. dissect it. And yeah. go with that, and that's what I did. So I totally understand. So now let's go to one more issue here, which is marijuana legalization. You said that you would do a new war on drugs. We already have a war on drugs, obviously, and it doesn't seem like it's worked, Senator Manchin. It's well, my war on drugs, Jenks, has been war on pharmaceutical drugs. I think the opiates that we're putting on the market, the FDA, what they have done, is just absolutely uncalled for. And then you have the DEA allowing these enormous amounts to be distributed in the marketplace which is horrible. And I even told President Trump this, it says, Mr. President, you've talked about uh, overregulation, this and that and everything. Why don't you do this? For every new drug that FDA allows, every new opiate drug that FDA allows to come on the market, why don't you make them take one off? Why are you inundating? Why are you allowing the marketplace to be inundated? That's my war on drugs. My war is on legal drugs that's killing West Virginians more than anything else. So your second largest donor, I know you say you don't look at the list, but is Mylan, and and you've got to know about that one, right? Sure. <laughs> and well, and I know. I mean, 
I didn't know the amounts, in honest, because I pay no attention, but my daughter being the CEO of Mylan, they've been very much involved. Let me just say, Jenks, on this. Mylan started as a, as a startup West Virginia company, it was startup success. Mike Pushkar and Don Painus back in the 60s. This has grown into a company that provides 3,500 of the best paying jobs in West Virginia, makes more pharmaceuticals, they've saved the country $187 billion in the last 10 years. So it's a company that we're proud of in West Virginia. And it's a company that I know and I've watched grow over the years. My daughter started over 22 to 25 years ago in a data processing in the mill room, worked her way up. Uh, owning American, can you have that opportunity? And you know, I'm yeah. but, proud of all the opportunities people have there. But Senator Manchin, you know, and I know your donors is here. I'm less concerned about that. Uh, I, you know, I look at the donor list. I am concerned about that. And sure. so, and you know, they increased the price of EpiPen by 600 percent, and everybody knows that. And that was a big story in the press. But the one that I really got my attention was when Health and Human Services said they defrauded American taxpayers to the tune of 1.27 billion dollars. So I'm wondering if you think that they should pay all of that money back because they did a settlement where they only paid back 400 some odd million. That leaves another $800 million they, they could pay back or whether the government should stop working with Mylan if they're you know, given their record of defrauding the US here. Well, I guess that'll be in the court system. I, you know, I don't know anything except I know that would be in the court system if that's the case, the federal government would take it. If a federal government takes a settlement, then they gotta think that they didn't have much of a case. To take a step. I don't know enough about that, Jenks, to speak on that issue. I've tried to stay out of these issues because of our relationship. I love my daughter unconditionally, the most beautiful person with the biggest heart I've ever met. So I love her unconditionally and I support her any and every way I possibly can in her private life. Her public life is something she has taken and she has worked her rear end off of and she is where she is because of her determination and hard work. Yeah. So wherever that goes, that's going to go. I know that the federal government, with the generics they put out there, you know, the one company in Morgantown, West Virginia, makes more prescriptions than any other, I think, any other single manufacturing in the country or in the world. Right. Um, we're proud of the 3,500 jobs that we have. They're good paying jobs. And if this saves the country, country $187 billion because of the lower priced drugs they're putting on the market, why shouldn't Medicare do the same? Uh, and the other thing is, I supported Bernie Sanders and I still support. If we can buy drugs and import them from other countries that has cheaper prices and they meet all the standards and the testing and inspections, then bring them in. I'm for that, Jenks. Yeah, so I have not heard the number uh, where, that you quoted on them saving us money. I've heard uh, about their incredibly high prices, but I, I hear you and that's-, that's they're, the low, they're the lowest here. price producers in the country, okay. in the world. So, that, okay, and I, and I hear you on that, and so people can look the that up input, online. Okay, make yep, sure that we're yep. both active on it. That's right. And so last thing is, is based on what you just said there, which is supporting Bernie Sanders. Uh, in the past, you've said that Bernie Sanders is not even a Democrat, and, and you have not been overall supportive sure. of him. And correct me where I'm wrong, of course. That's why sure. we're having the conversation. So in a state where Bernie Sanders won every county in the primary, and you've got an issue where oftentimes you do vote with Republicans, as we pointed out, 58% with Trump. On a I vote for the issue, James. No, I hear you, I hear you. I'm just talking about overall sure. votes, right? Student loans, for example, there was an attempt by Democrats to block an increase in student loans. You and Senator King flipped over 51-49, helped the Republicans so that there would not it's be a cap to on 3.8%. That's right. So. Now, on issues like that, again, it winds up helping the Republicans. Given all that, how do you hope to rally Democratic voters and progressive voters in West Virginia to show up in enough numbers to defeat Republicans in this election? Well, you know, you said first about Bernie. Bernie's not a Democrat. He won't register as a Democrat, okay? I respect Bernie and like Bernie, we have great conversations. Uh, but the facts are the facts. With that, uh, let's talk about uh, college tuition. I said, Bernie, where I come from, I think everybody ought to have an opportunity to have an education and we're gonna make sure that. And those who can't afford it should have a pathway forward to get a college education. Uh, if they take full load and graduate on time and, and complete something, then give two years of service to their 
to the country in some way in social services or whatever, that should exonerate them from paying anything back. That should be free education. We didn't give it to them, they earned it. They didn't take 10 years. They didn't take a hiatus. Uh, they did not give uh, not give something back. That's a difference. I, and, and I think there's a lot of West Virginians that feel the same as I do. I need help, help me and I'll help myself and I'll show you that the investment you made was worthy of, of, of that investment. I'm worthy of that investment. So I think there's enough people that's gonna look at me and they know my record. Uh, when I was governor, I got the state in the best financial shape it's ever been in. I expanded services to the seniors, to the poor, to the children more than ever before. I did everything I could because I basically said that we're a product of our environment. My, uh, uh, my commitment to West Virginia is based on my values of who I am. That means our children should have a start. Seniors should be looked after and taken care of for the contributions they made. And veterans should be rewarded for the services they've given. I just couldn't be everything to everybody. And I'm sure there's some people, and I guess when you talk about progressive, you're talking about the liberal wing that think that I should be more liberal and more um, um, more liberal, if you will. Uh, I'm, I wanna think I'm more responsible and more compassionate. All right, Senator Joe Manchin, uh, thank you for joining us on The Young Turks. We appreciate you taking the time out and addressing the audience on these really important questions. Thank you so James, much. It's, it's great being with you and look forward to being back with you too on any issues. I'm happy to explain. All Might right. not always agree, but you know what? I owe everybody an explanation where I'm coming from and the reason I vote. And if I make a mistake, I'll be the first to admit I made a mistake and I can fix it. All right, thank you, Senator Manchin. We appreciate thank it. Thank you, Jenks. Good to be with you. Young Turks members get to watch every single interview live as it happens, tytnetwork.com slash join.